Well, somebody had asked an interesting question about corn, about cross-pollination. Now, this first row here is my popcorn. Then it's the Indian corn, which is outrageously tall. Interesting stuff. This is the early sweet corn. This is the late sweet corn. Now you can see on this early sweet corn, the pollen is starting to come off, but it's got to fall down onto the silk to pollinate it. Now, the late sweet corn is just starting. It hasn't formed any ears, so there is no silk at all. But there, there's a little bit of pollen coming. But you can see that, that early stuff, that's very much into it. But then that falls down on the silk. Now it's possible that pollen from this could pollinate there by falling onto that silk. But his concern was with popcorn. Now I have to say, <laughs> I've never given a lot of thought. You can see I've got pretty big ears forming. And now you can see there, there's kernels of pollen on the silk. And that's what actually, you know, each one of those strands of silk goes to a kernel on the cob. And that's why if you get poor pollination, you'll have uh, places on the cob that never got kernels on them. But with this much, you know, I mean, it's bound to pollinate. But his concern was between regular corn, or like sweet corn, and popcorn, if that would cross-pollinate. Well, I have never had it happen. And I have never given it a lot of thought. Though I know there are cases, you know, where this can happen. I have heard cautions about pumpkins and squash, how they can cross-pollinate too in the garden. There again, I've always grown them right next to each other. I, I've never had any <laughs> cause to be concerned. You know, they, they never seem to. But I think it's a matter of timing. Now we'll see if this Indian corn should go into the pollen stage at the same time the popcorn is forming ears you could end up with multicolored popcorn. That's not an impossibility. And you could probably, if you knew exactly the amount of days it took for this to reach that stage, the amount of days, you could probably purposely seed it in such a way as to make it cross-pollinate. But by the time these start pollinating, the sweet corn will all be done. But I know there was a a case with wheat where somebody had planted some genetically modified wheat in a field. You know, some seed company was doing this. And across the road from them, somebody planted normal wheat. Well, it cross-pollinated with the normal wheat. And that farmer got sued by the seed company because they claimed he was stealing their genetics, which they had patented. You know, so it can happen. But you can see like here now, I mean, this is reaching the end of the pollination. The silk is already starting to dry up. And once it dries up, you know, then it's, it's not a problem. But we'll see. I'll keep an eye on this. If this Indian corn should reach the stage of pollinating at the same time as the popcorn, and then we'll have to see if we get calico popcorn, which I think there is such a thing. <laughs> Maybe that's how they got it. I don't know. But 
at the same time, now my potatoes, I have never had them cross pollinate and they are planted right next to each other. You know, so, and they're blossoming at the same time. But I'm not a Mendel, and I really don't get too involved with the genetics of something. But I could see where, like say, if the popcorn, which to me, this popcorn seems I'm usually tall. But if the popcorn would cross-pollinate with regular popcorn, you might end up with uh, like a calico popcorn that will not pop. Or it could work the other way, and it was corn that has explosive potential when you cook it, I don't know. But I, I had never actually paid any attention to that before. I mean, some people are really into that, but like I say, I've never had a problem, but it could be just a coincidence that when, you know, that the, the day count on these just never lines up. You could probably save this pollen <laughs> and throw it on some of them, I don't know. But it's an interesting idea, and I will kind of pay more attention to that. I've always worried, uh, like say over, well, I think I'm on the macro mode, so you aren't going to see it, but there's a, a field over there of the genetically modified regular field corn that they cut for silage. I've always concerned about that cross-pollinating with my sweet corn. And one year I did end up with popcorn that had an unusually large ear count, and I thought maybe that was part of the problem, but it was normal popcorn. But there again, timing-wise, my corn is way ahead of their corn. Because they aren't really, you know, it's not planted for harvesting, it's planted later for silage. But interesting, and I will actually pay a little more attention to it. But I'm not too concerned about it. Like I said, I've never noticed a, a problem with cross-pollination that I've been aware of. So, But it's certainly healthy corn, and I don't know. You know, the popcorn doesn't show any signs of tasseling out yet, and neither does the Indian corn. So if those two should line up, by some, you know, freak of, of timing. Then we'll see. We'll learn something there. But so far, that Indian corn has impressed the hell out of me. Just in, uh, it'll be interesting when it does form ears. Like I say, you know, if you look at the, the root system, how that spreads out, even in that heavy wind, they did not move. But we'll have to look at the ear count because, you know, a lot of field corn now, they've got it set up, they plant it very close together. A single ear on each stalk, rather than, you know, it used to be you get five, six ears on a stalk on field corn. But it was planted further apart. But corn is one of the things that they have done a lot of genetics with. Uh, much like potatoes, I think a uh, potato was one of the most genetically enhanced kind of uh, crops that there is. They've done more fiddling with that than anything. But corn has got to be right up there too. You know, corn is not just corn. There's a lot of things going on. But we'll see. It's not impossible, and it should be very apparent if my popcorn is multicolored. Then we know it's a problem, or a potential problem. 